Mayor Keith James, uh, your stage, come on up. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. No, you could do better than that because look, look at this. Good evening, everyone. Oh, I am just so, so excited. What a lovely, lovely venue and the cause. The cause. It's all about the cause and the children. So um, the only disappointment I have is they were supposed to have a podium here and had a binder because I got about a half an hour speech. <laughs> uh -huh. No, only kidding. So, uh, but today is a celebration. It, it, it's probably one of many celebrations uh, that we will have as a community surrounding this vision and this course. But before I go any further, there are a few people who I need to acknowledge and thank, uh, beginning with my lovely wife, Lorna, who is back there somewhere. Lorna. She's a golfer too, so uh, we will be spending some time out here. Uh, and then of course I need to uh, certainly acknowledge my uh, uh, partners on the dais, uh, city commissioners, uh, beginning with President Paduzzi, Joe Paduzzi uh, is there, yes. Please applaud all of the commissioners because they don't get a lot of, we don't get a lot of applause. People don't show up at city commission meetings to clap and say, oh, you're so wonderful. So please, do not, do not hold back with the applause. There you go for Joe. And since you're standing, this is a standing ovation, right? Uh, the district commissioner, Christina Lambert. Christina? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Kelly Schof. There she is, there she is, all right. Commissioner Christy Fox. I know I got somebody pointing to the commissioners. You don't think I know my commissioners? Oh, that's my chief of staff telling me, okay. And the newest commissioner uh, who gets to, 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 to join in the celebration of this wonderful thing, and she didn't have to do a vote yet, although you will be voting Monday night on the lease. Uh, Shalanda Warren, welcome, Shalanda. But listen, tonight to this evening, we are celebrating the very special partnership that is evolving, that has evolved between the West Palm uh, Golf Community Trust and the city of West Palm Beach. Um, on behalf of the city, I want to personally thank each and every one of the donors, uh, the, 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 the board members, the members of the community trust, this certainly would not have happened without your generosity, uh, without your commitment to the community. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you individually, because Seth didn't give me a list of names. That probably would have taken uh, a half an hour, but you know who you are, and please, we, we thank you so much. The other category of persons I do want to thank are the residents of West Palm Beach. And, and, and I need to thank them for their patience because this has been a long time coming. Uh, and, 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 and believe me, before uh, we had to shut down the golf course, it was a very popular venue. The clubhouse, families would bring their kids, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a regular meeting place in addition, obviously, to, to being a venue for golf. So the fact that it has been shut down for so many years uh, has been a tremendous, uh, not disappointment, but you know, it, it, it has left a hole in the hearts of our community. Uh, and so to any residents who are here, thank you for your patience. But as you can see, better times, they are a coming. Definitely. Okay, now. Uh, the man of the hour, and, and by the way, before before I got here, uh, my director of communications, uh, Kathleen's here somewhere. Uh, she told, she gave me very specific instructions. She said, "Really, uh, uh, Mayor, you should tone down any nice things you say about Seth Wall, <laughs> because he's very shy and 
you know, he just wants to spread the love to all of the donors. And then I, I Seth, I have spread the love to all the donors, all the donors, you feel the love. Thank you so much, we really appreciate it. But I have to really take my hat off. And it, it does bring tears to my eyes, because I remember the very first conversation I had with, with this gentleman. You know, he came into the conference room, and then, you know, he, he had a little idea, he had a vision. He said, that golf course there, I think I can help you with that. But the more we talked, the more I realized, yes, he did want to certainly help us with the golf course and rebuild it and, and, and the clubhouse and everything, but his vision was much broader than that. It, he really wanted to do something for our community and for our kids. And I got right with that. As I said, I, I share that. So we have really knitted um, uh, and bonded over this vision. Uh, so Seth, and I know you're going to come up later and talk, but a, a special round of applause for Seth Wallace. One of the reasons that his vision for this course resonated with me, and if anyone has heard me speak before, my vision for the city is, is to build a community of opportunity for all. A community of opportunity for all. There are two things in that. One is certainly building a community. Uh, we, we need to have a strong community uh, where those who have are watching out and, and, and looking out for those who have not. But it's also where that community is such that it is providing opportunity uh, for each and every person that might hear. My, my, my desire is that no matter your zip code in our city, no matter your skin tone in our city, there is something in West Palm Beach that is for you that will enable you to pursue your dreams. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm confident that this golf course, once it's constructed, will create opportunities for so many people. And so when Seth talked to me about uh, you know, his vision for the course and what it could do for the community, it certainly resonated. So, so as I close, uh, again, I, I just want to thank each and every one of you. For, oh, I, I forgot, I almost did. We do have another elected official here, the county commissioner for this district, Greg Weiss. Greg, I apologize, I'm so sorry. Uh, Greg is a golfer as well. Uh, we have played in the uh, a couple of charity tournaments together. And Greg, I promise I won't tell any stories if you won't tell any stories about golf games and we're good, okay? Oh, the other person I do need to identify, whoa, I've got to look over there, is the city administrator for West Palm Beach. Faye Johnson is here. Yes. <laughs> we don't get any money if Faye is not happy, so... We, we got to keep Faye happy. And then the assistant city administrator for the city, Armando Fana, who has been the quarterback for this project. Armando, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. We have another county commissioner who came in, Mac Bernard. Mac Bernard, thank you for your support. Okay, is there anyone else I missed? Uh, Rebecca, anybody else I missed? Okay, all right, this is it. Listen, I'm just here to thank you and warm up the crown. The main event is coming up later. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Look forward to seeing you on the course one day. Thank you. Well done, Mayor. Um, and like Seth, you're not shy when you have a microphone in front of you, are you? Wow. We're gonna get, yes, yes. We're gonna get right to this. Uh, I know there's a lot of golfers here. I know a lot of the people here. I know there's some people that don't play a lot of golf, but we're really privileged tonight to have Gil Hans here. When you look at the best golf course architects in the world, you look at one or two or three names, and Gil's at the top of the list right now. And I thought it would be uh, relevant to, to talk about what Gil has done in his recent career. We, we met 20 years ago at the Boston Golf Club. I proudly wear the, the logo tonight, uh, where Seth and I have spent a lot of time together. But I'm going to just name some golf courses, then I'm going to put the piece of the puzzle together. Pinehurst, number four, the Olympic course uh, in 2016 down in Rio, LA Country Club, Winged Foot, the Country Club in Brookline, Oakland Hills, Baltusrol, Southern Hills, are you bored yet? Oakmont, uh, the new PGA headquarters course in Frisco, Texas, Harding Park are all courses that Gil has either designed, 
restored or renovated, and they've all held major championships, or they, or they all will hold major championships. Think about that. Uh, he's done on his own uh, other PGA Tour courses that we play events on the TPC of Boston that Seth started at Deutsche Bank years ago. Uh, Colonial in Fort Worth, one of the best courses on the tour. Plainfield, Ridgewood, Aronimink, all have hosted PGA Tour events. In the last few years alone, he's designed the Yahoopy Match Play Club, Cap Rock in Nebraska, the Boston Golf Club, I said, and Stream Song. Just think about 18 months from now what we're going to have here. Um, oh, that's my wife. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, honey. Uh, rookie. So, without further ado, Gil Hans, the best architect in the world. I first met Seth Waugh on the driving range at Old Marsh, maybe 15 or 16 years ago. I saw this cute little boy uh, hitting balls left-handed. You don't see very many left-handed golfers, or at least we don't with that kind of swing. I, I walked over, he walked over, we introduced ourselves. Uh, in about 10 minutes, Seth had asked me more questions than anybody in my life had asked me. He knew more about me than I knew about myself. And Mayor, you've seen the same thing from Seth. He's the ultimate in eye-to-eye in -eye contact. You've taught me so much. And uh, for you to put together the West Palm Golf Community Trust in this amount of time is nothing short of spectacular. Seth Waugh, everybody, the founder. <laughs> Both uh, Gil's wife, Tracy, Seth's wife, Jane, are in the audience. Jane's taking um, pictures here. Thank you so much, Seth, for uh, having me host this. And um, I think the easiest way to start this is uh, how did we get here? Well, first of all, I want to make something clear. When he called and said, like, should I live there? I said, Brad, I didn't say it's paradise. I said, Brad, it's an IQ test. Uh, and because he's a professional golfer, it took him many years to pass that test. Uh, it was not the first conversation. But um, uh, anyway, you know, like, Everybody thanking me, like this life's a team sport, right? Like we've put together an incredible group, which I'll talk about in a second. But the, the first one I got to start with is the mayor. You know, I knocked on his door and, uh, you know, we had met each other a little bit through Brightline, but really didn't know each other very well. And I said, I've got this kind of crazy idea, I think, but I think, it, I think we can pull it off. And within an hour, he kind of said, look, that's a great idea. And you take your time to figure out whether it works. And um, and I then called, you know, Gil and said, is this crazy? And you said, you know, this is a nine or a ten out of uh, property. And by the way, when I told you we were getting this hands guy, uh, you probably didn't realize I, I meant it, Mayor. You know? <laughs> um, and, uh, and then I called, um, we called Dirk and, and said, you know, Dirk Ziff, who no, doesn't want anybody, he's like Sergeant Flag and Mash, he doesn't want anybody to know who he is. Uh, but he is an incredible entrepreneur, person, organizer, um, and architect, as it turns out. And uh, he really gave me the faith, they gave me the faith that this thing could work, right? That um, it is an amazing piece of property. I mean, can you, you're going to see the rest of it. We're in a corner of it. There's 190 acres behind us, right? You, you can't believe that it exists in the, like, whatever is the... It's not the fastest growing kind of town in the country, it's one of them, right? And, it, and, it, and the elevation change is just perfect kind of teeing grounds. Um, but for the mayor to take that leap of faith on, on me uh, and us uh, at that point was extraordinary. And so the courage he showed, the leadership he showed, we're investing in his leadership, right? That's really what we're doing here. Um, and then, you know, we saw all the, uh, the commissioners other than Shalanda, who wasn't on the scene yet, uh, and not only did they say that's a good idea, they, they said that's a great idea and let's do it. Um, everybody warned me about how hard it is to work with a city. Uh, I've had the exact opposite experience. Armando's been amazing, Faye was amazing. Uh, it has been so remarkably easy um, and it's you know been a, a treat. It helps when you have Tommy Frankel on your team because uh, he can get anything done in about four minutes. Um, but it, you know, it's been just this great experience. And, and why do we do it? Well, because it's here, right? And because I said to the mayor, I said, look, if you want money, there's going to be a lot of developers that are going to build condos and a mediocre golf course and 
you'll have the same problem in a period of time. If you want real golf, um, I think we can do something here that's that's really special. And uh, and they trusted us to do that. And so we then put together, you know, each of us called somebody, and Dirk called Dan Stanton, who, you know, was a miracle man who raised, you know, $43 million um, out of uh, this community and this room. Uh, and, and made it look easy, by the way. Um, I know it wasn't, but, uh, and then, you know, I had the idea that, you know, we're gonna build something, maybe we should get somebody who knows how to build something, <laughs> and called my great friend Tommy, who jumped in, and by the way, everybody that we called, we had them at a low. It wasn't like a hard conversation. It was it was so easy. And and then we had the idea to bring in Chris Williams, who, you know, for community kind of relationships and programming, is he's going to become the most important guy in the room here soon. Uh, we brought in Ray Saladinas, uh, that Dan uh, wanted to help on the, on the fundraising side. It's been amazing. And then we had an idea of bringing in, you know, uh, Mick Walsdorf, who I'd never met, who's, you know, run our, uh, our world-class architect. And, He's done amazing things and delivered, you know, interior designers for free. And so we added a younger group and, you know, everybody kind of knew somebody who they thought would this would resonate with. And then we, you know, sort of began calling. And uh, uh, it has been such an extraordinary experience. Um, it's happened organically. It's happened magically. Everybody's committed their sweat, but their passion and, and uh, and their excitement about this, and, and it's, we're united by just wanting to leave the room better than we found it. That this is our home or our adopted home. Some people it took longer to get there than others, um, but it you know we want to make a difference. And and this is not about you know we're going to create an unbelievable facility. He's going to build this unbelievable golf course that is going to uh, become a destination. So we're going to you know it, it, we're going to import a lot of people here. Uh, to 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 the you know the city uh, because of what you know we're going to build um, but, and we're going to build an amazing facilities we're going to have a part three course and a practice facility and a putting experience and all the great things so it's going to be great stuff but what we really want to build is a community that the mayor talked about like that's what this is about right this isn't about um, another great golf course and you know certainly the area needs more public access golf and we think that's um, you know, a great gift, and we'll make it accessible, we'll make it uh, affordable, and we'll welcome everybody here. Uh, but we want the, you know, we want to create a community that's based in golf, but not just about golf, right? Um, we want the, the area to own this place. This, we called it a park for a reason, right? This is 190 acres that the residents own. We don't own it. Um, we're just borrowing it so that we can do some good with it. And, uh, we're going to create the best laboratory for golf on the planet. Uh, we're going to run every program that we possibly can think of. That um, we're going to experiment a lot. Uh, we'll, you know, I think the possibilities in terms of program are liter programming are literally endless. Uh, we're talking about you know after school programs. We've got South Florida PGA is going to build their building here, uh, and so we have a chance to do something really special, and we have a chance to impact an extraordinary amount of lives um, through this incredible game that um, we certainly all love. I hope, you know, most people here are, are for that reason. But this isn't just about golf, this is this is changing lives. And, uh, and that's what gets us up in the morning. And it, we had a conversation yesterday with our group and you know, we all came to the conclusion that we've all had lived, you know, fairly full lives. Um, that this, when we're sort of sitting back at the end of the day in our rocking chair, that this may well be the most fulfilling thing that we've ever done. Um, and it's such an opportunity, it's such a gift to us, uh, frankly, to be able to uh, see this vision and, and have the opportunity to do it and have the trust of, uh, of the folks that are here uh, that, that have given us this opportunity. Um, and so we couldn't, you know, I couldn't be more flattered, I couldn't be more honored, I couldn't be more grateful um, or humbled uh, or fulfilled. Um, by the opportunity to be here with all of you. And the donors, you know, I, I, the mayor's thanked you. I, we can't thank you enough. It's incredible generosity. We, you know. We're, we're, we're 
hit it at, at you know a really interesting time. Um, you know, we, we sort of hit the pause button for a second on COVID, and then realized you know maybe it was an accelerator button rather than a pause button. Uh, and um, it's just you know most of you made it so very easy. I think everybody feels like they're part of something really special and sort of part of a club. Like it's not a you know, it's, this is a public golf course, but it's it, it's a club, and and I like to think of it as an investment club, right? Um, because we're 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 all donors, but we're really investing in the future. We're investing in the game. We're investing in our home, uh, and I think we're going to create something here that I talked before about importing a lot of golfers and a lot of hopefully hedge fund guys that will pay, you know, from New York that will pay 500 bucks a round. Um, but, um, but we're also going to export this vision to the rest of the world. If, if we can create an example, and this is where it gets really interesting for the PGA of America, is if we can create this shiny example in the hill of public-private partnerships that use the game of golf to change communities, change lives, um, think what we could do around the country and indeed the world, right? So we're going to take this model and, and we're going to export it to all sorts of other places. It may not be as, you know, as grand as this and there's certainly not pieces of property like this as Gil knows lying around. Uh, but maybe it's a nine-holer in a rural community that we can, you know, sort of redevelop to change people's lives in there. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, uh, one of the great gifts of this whole thing is uh, um, is the friendship that uh, Jane and I have developed with you and Morna and, and lots of others on this project. And you start out with an idea and suddenly you have, you know, uh, hundreds of new friends. And, and, uh, uh, and I, I frankly... I'm flattered that it did it with you, but it, I've been brought to tears a number of times throughout this process. And, um, so thank you all, and uh, thanks for the kind words. That's incredible, Seth. Uh, well said, and uh, nobody could have done it quite as quickly as you've done. Um, I just love a peek at that Rolodex of yours at some point. It must be the greatest thing in the world to see what you can call. Uh, when Seth was running the Deutsche Bank Championship, uh, he made a quick decision to help the proceeds of the event go to the Tiger Woods Foundation. He's got re relationships with all the best PGA Tour players in the world, and I can someday see Tiger driving down the road and coming out here playing with his son Charlie. I can see so many of the tour players that you know wanting to be here uh, and raising awareness of what, not just the golf courses, but what we're doing here. Uh, for the whole community because you see the golf tournaments on television but it's the greatest medium in, in the world uh, golf and if you wanted to raise money you host a golf tournament if you're a company you want to raise money you host a golf tournament football teams have a golf tournament to raise money uh, Gil he was sitting there quietly um, and one of the things that's striking when you walk onto this property and we're in Florida is it's not flat and it's kind of sandy what does that make you feel like well, thank you. It's always tough going after Seth. It's a tough act to follow, but thank you. Because you're falling, you're falling asleep by the no, time no. you get the chance. I was just looking at my watch. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> just um, you know, the, the fact that we've got sand and we've got topography, every golf course architect dies to have that. I mean, it really is that's the magic sauce for creating great golf courses is to have that opportunity to work with those two features. And we have it here in an amazing abundance. The sand obviously goes way down below us, but when you think about South Florida and you guys look over the shoulder and look at the topography out there, you don't find sites like this. And so to be given a canvas or entrusted with a canvas like this was really a truly a special opportunity for us. And you know, when Seth called, I'll, I'll go into a quick story because you've got the Boston Golf shirt on. So John Minnick was the founder of Boston Golf Club. and tragically passed away about 12 years ago and was was a very key figure in our lives. And I'll, I'll never forget, uh, very early in the process of doing Boston Golf Club, he, Seth came out, Brad came out, and then Seth was talking about doing a little par three hole at his, his house. And John said, you need to do that because these guys are gonna be really important in your life. Somewhere down the road, something's gonna come up and these, these are great guys. They're terrific people, and they're going to be really important in your life. And, and as I sit here, all I can think of is John Minnick and how excited he would be. Uh, we're, we're maybe going to cry now. <laughs> um, Another thing Minnick did for me, did for me that I didn't even know. Yeah, it, it, it was truly special that he put us together. But, you know, 
we we love to do what we do and, and I've got a great team assembled that you know I get to come here and shake hands and kiss babies but you know the people who work with me are the ones who deliver the product and we're excited we've set Tracy and I have set down roots here on a temporary basis we're going to take that IQ test maybe somewhere down the road and see <laughs> see if we pass but we're excited to be out here on bulldozers and, and getting this thing going pretty soon because you know, you've entrusted us with a great opportunity and we intend to fully deliver on that you know why does a sandy soil make a difference well, it gives you the opportunity to drain well, number one. It also gives, the, I think, the aesthetic that we all love about golf is, you know, golf, the landscape itself is green grass, and the, the contrast with the sand in particular native areas, I think, really plays well off of each other. I think that's a beautiful aesthetic that you see in the Australian sand belt. That's what this site really reminds us of, is the opportunity to do something along those lines. Uh, you see it at Seminole, you see it at the golf courses on Long Island. So I think you've got that combination. And it also is going to make this very economical to build. We don't need to build, we don't need to import bunker sand, we don't need to import greens mix. We can basically just build this old school, which is tremendous from the standpoint of economy and efficiency, but it's even better from the artistic standpoint. Because when you're trying to create features that are disconnected from the landscape, it's always difficult to get them to blend. But here, this should be seamless. I mean, this golf course should just flow perfectly through it. We were having a conversation earlier with Chris Williams, and we talked about earth moving out here. And when you think about it, if you highlight the lows, if you make the lows just slightly lower, and make the highs just slightly higher on a site like this, you've created a tremendous amount of drama and interest in it. And we feel like we can do that. We don't need to move a lot of earth out here, but when we do it, I think it'll have a great impact. Seth, you've had two remarkable sites at Pinehurst, number four, where you designed the most popular course now at, at Pinehurst, and a Hoopy Match Play Club in, in Cobtown, Georgia. Um, and those sites were very sandy. Um, are they similar to this? Is Can you make courses? Oh, so Hoopy was the number one ranked course when it opened in 2017 or 18. Um, can we? Can you s predict before it happened? <laughs> oh, thanks, Brett, but that was actually Gil, not me. Did I say Seth? You did. That's uh, Seth, said, what do you think? Look like. <laughs> uh, no, we don't predict, because it's such a subjective thing. When people come to rate your golf courses, you never know, you know what kind of experience they're going to have, but I like our chances. I like your chances. Everything you do is, is tough. And First, uh, uh, two quick things. One, you asked before, like, why? And, and Jane and I came out here when we knew it, this was, you know, two years ago now, I guess. Came out here and walked our way through the fence and walked in the middle of this property. And Jane looked at me and she says, we, we have to do this. Like, this is unbelievable. Um, and then the other reaction that I got was from Gil after we walked for the first time. And I, and I said, what do you think? And he says, I better not screw this up. He <laughs> <laughs> used a slightly different word, but um, you get the point. Seth, you talked about the, the, the many different functions that are going to happen from here. Uh, talk about PGA HOPE and what that means. Yeah, so PGA HOPE is uh, is our veterans. We have four sort of pillars to, not sort of, pillars to our foundation. Um, PGA, uh, our, our junior programs, which are PGA Junior League Works, which is our efforts to diversify and include in the game. Uh, we've added a place to play, which this is the shining example of, and then the, the, the fourth and not in that order. Uh, is PJ Hope, which is a veterans program, and um, it's considered uh, therapy, uh, and we actually get funding from uh, the, the VA uh, because we're saving lives, literally. Um, and our best teacher is actually located in South Florida, Judy Alvarez, and um, it's an amazing program where where I've been around it a lot, and and you know it's as our Chris Novak who runs it for us day to day says it's you know 72 to 100 moments in a day where they don't have to think about anything other than hitting a golf ball. And um, you know these are people that have had serious injuries, uh, PTSD, all sorts of things. Uh, it's saving lives and the letters we get and the, the, the hugs that I get um, from, from you know, veterans and wives and children is extraordinary. And it's something that's really fundamental to what we do. I know we have three or four of the veterans here. I'd love them to raise their hands and just get recognized. The Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. For the half of 1% that they put, put their lives on the line to make our country what it is. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think we're about time to... Uh, Put those shovels in the ground, Seth. Gil. I got one more thing, Seth. I need equal time. 
So I mentioned that there, there's a team effort as part of this, and you know, my partner Jim Wagner, who's not here tonight, is, is a big part of everything we do and, and how well things go, and, and his talents are amazing. But we've got a secret weapon on this project that we've, we've worked with a few times in the past, and um, he deserves attention for what he did here, and that's Dirk Ziff. Um, you know, we had an opportunity to look at this property and, and look at it as a blank slate and a, and a clean one, which was great. Every architect wants that. And so we asked Dirk to take the first crack at the routing and, and figure out a way. And we talked a lot about, you know, kind of pointed him in the right direction on Clubhouse. And one of the coolest things about this project is we asked all of our friends, you know, what do you love about golf? Like, what, what's fun? What's interesting? And we got all these answers. And so we tried to bake that into the, the design of the golf course. And then Dirk went off and, and, and did the routing and came back and said, okay, that's nice. And then I started to try and break it down in every possible way I could and twist it and turn it. And I couldn't. It was awesome. It was great. And it's what exists out here now. So I'm always happy to be a collaborator on projects. And, and Dirk certainly is a, is a heavy collaborator on this. And as Seth said earlier, one of the, the coolest things about this project is the friendships. And the people that I've gotten to meet that I never thought I would, you know, you never know the, the Tommy Frankel and, and the Mick Walsdorf and, the, and I've, I've known Dan for a long time. So, but just this team that you've put together, it's amazing. It's amazing how happy everybody is and excited. And, and you know, what do we all dread the most right now is, you know, Zoom calls or conference calls. Or just, and we, every Wednesday, for the most part, every single person makes that call. And we're all busy in what we do, and we're, but we enjoy that hour of talking and dreaming. And you put that together. I mean, you brought everybody into that room and under the tent. And I think that uh, it's an amazing group of people, and, and I fully expect that we're going to do amazing things for this property and for this community. So thank you, Seth. That's great, Gil. Thank you. And what, I, what what's so fantastic is when, when you look at this actual plan, Seth, and see the 18 holes, you see a par 3 course, you see a Himalayas putting green, there's nothing you won't be able to do in the game here when you come here. And, and a lot of times when you're talking about access, you, you can't get access, you can't practice, you can't hit balls. You'll be able to come here and just get a sandwich and watch people hit golf balls. But I think most importantly, you're going to meet great people. You're going to learn a lot about life like we all have being around this beautiful game. Thank you so much for showing up. Last thank you. Our South Florida friends over there that have, uh, are going to move their headquarters here, keep their eyes and ears on us, um, and uh, and run all the programming. They can't thank you guys enough. You're wonderful partners. And thank you. Thank you again, Chef Michael Toscano and Davis Sesma for bringing Michael oh, Toscano. Yeah, Davis, well done.